A crazy Karen chased us with her car. This was like two years ago in the fall season. I had recently turned 18 and my friend was 19 at the time. In my country, you have to be 18 before you're able to take the license. And at the time, I had a moped to transport myself to and from school and work. So me and my friend were planning on hanging out that day after school. When the next time came, we took my moped and went off. We lived in a small town, so the roads were small and the max speed was between 40 to 50 kilometers an hour. Nothing was out of the ordinary until a white Volvo was driving very close to us all of a sudden. I yelled to my friend to look behind us carefully so we didn't lose our balance and she could see that it was a woman holding up her phone and I could see her holding something in the side mirror. So I sped up a little and she was still keeping up on us. Mind you, she was swerving a bit since she was paying attention to her phone more than her car. I realized that we weren't getting away from her so I let off the gas and we slowed down substantially. She almost rammed into us but surprisingly she found the brake and slowly minimized her speed, but was still incredibly close. Our turn came and we had to stop because of the oncoming traffic, and she was still incredibly close. I could still see her holding up her phone. She was obviously recording us, so I flipped her off. When we did take the turn, I sped up as fast as I could to get away from her, but she gassed her car, not caring about oncoming traffic, and they honked at her. My friend was laughing. I was laughing because even though she's an idiot and chasing us, it was quite hilarious because we did nothing wrong. We had to make another turn and she slowed down a bit, still behind us, and we clearly saw that she held her phone up and pressed it against the passenger window. We both flipped her off. Funny thing was that she didn't see where she was going, so her car swayed a little bit. Complete moron. What I think she was trying to record was my friend, because the helmet she had on was a bicycle helmet. But where I come from, wearing a bicycle helmet is approved on a sitting moped. It's not a normal bicycle helmet, it's more thick and covers the whole head, and not just the upper head, but also down by the ears, which is approved. Thankfully, I never saw her her again, but we did see a car a lot like hers driving around my neighborhood a while back. She couldn't find my moped either because I always parked it behind our house in the backyard. Thankfully, I never dealt with her again. What an absolute psychopath. Mopeds and motorcycles are some of the most vulnerable driving apparatuses on the road. You are completely exposed to the elements with just a helmet and the collective trust of everybody around you. So the fact that this lady was riding this person's bumper, trying to get a picture of him because of some weird helmet they had on, is just crazy. This lady could have seriously hurt them, not to mention everybody else around her. She could have swerved onto oncoming traffic. Absolutely insane. I'm sure she would have wished she had put her phone down if she actually did end up hurting somebody. I was late for class, but Murphy's Law decided to make me even more late. This last year, I've been teaching Spanish as a volunteer a few days a week. To do so, I have to go to a nearby town, but that's not an issue since the bus that gets me there stops just in front of my door at 9.20 and arrives at the cultural center at 9.50, so I'm always 10 minutes early to talk to my colleagues and get ready. Now, last week, I went to the bus stop like always, waited for the bus like always, and when it approached, I signed for him to stop like always. I saw the guy looking at me, using the turn signals to stop, and going away, just like that. When I recovered from my surprise, I started to think that the next bus wouldn't be here until 9.40 and I would be late. Unless I ran to the underground station 20 minutes away from my home and do a few transfers, then get in the line, then I might get in time. There's also a bus that would take me to the station, but I didn't want to risk it. So I ran all the way and got there in just 15 minutes. The bus arrived there at the same time as me, but I didn't care that much because I could do it. So I jumped on the train. They just got to the station and luckily when doing the transfer to the train line, it was in the station too. I looked at the phone and saw that it was 945 and I was going to make it, but I texted my colleague saying that I might be a bit late just in case. So when I got out of the train to take the final transfer to the underground, I checked my jacket pockets as a reflex and found out the one where I always put my phone was empty and the zipper was open. So I jumped again in the train while the doors were closed and asked the guy that's sitting in the same spot as me if he saw something. Then we both crouched to look around and that's when I felt something in my pants pocket. Yeah, I had the phone all along. So after apologizing for being an idiot, I got out in the next station to go back. I probably would have been on time if I didn't take the train and I had just taken the second bus in the beginning. Also, if I just knew my phone was in my pocket, it would have saved me the trouble of looking for a phone that wasn't missing. Finally, I got to my station, got to my destination without any more incidents, and got scolded by my students for being almost an hour late. The moral of the story? If something goes wrong, let it be. Trying to fix it will only make it worse. This is a classic case of if it can get worse, it definitely will get worse. And this just had a domino effect. The guy misses the train because the bus driver just, I don't know, didn't look at him. Or maybe he just saw through him. And then he decides to try and take the train underground to get to his destination quicker, only to then lose his phone on the train and then have to look for it, only to 
to then find out that his phone's in his pocket. And at the end of the day, he's already an hour late for his class. Not a fun way of starting your day. At the end of the day, sometimes the quickest path is just to go straight forward, accept your fate, and take the next bus. My future wife doesn't know how much money I make. I'm 37 and she is 34. We have been together for several years and this fall we are supposed to get married. But our relationship is built on a single lie. I never once told her about my finances during the entire relationship. She has no idea how much I really make or how much I have other than enough to support myself. She sometimes questions things I buy. The other day I bought a $200 coffee maker to replace my Starbucks coffee and she asked how I could afford it. I told her I got it on sale and it wasn't that much. This was obviously a lie. I have saved and invested for most of my life and I plan to retire when I'm 45, which she doesn't know either. I have had big boy jobs for many years and want to transition to a non-career position. However, I am reluctant to tell her anything about this. I have an income that can be described as well off by local standards. She has no idea I have enough money to do whatever I want. I am afraid if she found out that I have hundreds of thousands of dollars split between multiple banks and even more in investments, she would be extremely disappointed that I projected myself in another way. I am not sure how this all plays out. Should I come clean and disclose my finances to her? Should I hire a lawyer? Or should I just keep lying and go ahead with the wedding in spite of what it might do to my relationship with her? This is a tricky one because I can see his apprehension in telling her. He obviously doesn't want to rock the boat with someone he's about to get married to, but at the same time, finances is an extremely important topic to have down before you get married. In most cases, they're probably going to combine finances where they both have just one bank account in most cases. And so it's probably a little weird to drop on your future wife by saying, hey, I'm actually super loaded and I plan on retiring when I'm 45, whether you like it or not. It seems like this guy has not considered his wife in this equation in the slightest. It's awesome that he's rich and he's got a lot of money, but she should be the person to know about that. There's a chance that his future wife could be really hurt that he didn't say anything about this sooner. He obviously put a lot of work and thought and energy into his finances and planning the future he wanted, but he didn't really consider her at all. Marriage is about planning the future and growing old together and being there for each other. And it seems like she's just going to be at a huge disadvantage here, trying to mold to what this guy already worked out for the rest of his life. So yeah, he needs to tell her like right away. You don't want to go into a marriage with any kind of lie lingering in the background, even if it's something that you should have told him, but you didn't. My girlfriend breaks up with me on a monthly basis. I'm looking for some advice on what to do. As the title says, she breaks up with me and wants to get back together very frequently. Should I let this behavior continue? The last time she stormed out of my room is because I said a joke on how she smelled and she didn't like it, to which I apologized immediately, but she said she will lose her self-worth if she stays with me after that. Things like this make me wonder what will happen if the relationship actually hit hard times in the future. I dropped her off at her house. She then called me last night and was telling me how I don't care about her and if I did I would have reached out to her. I told her that she was the one that ended it and how people don't usually end relationships for reasons like this. She says that's the only way she knows how to react. Now what I want to know is should I get back together with her and help her overcome this or just stay broken up? She said she wants to start therapy to try and fix this issue of hers. Is it worth it to stay or still just to go? In all honesty when he gets back together with her she's just going to repeat the cycle again. So his best bet is just to get out and to get out fast. She clearly has issues and this is just not an appropriate way to react to anybody. I mean, he was clearly in this context just saying a joke about her, which people in relationships do, by the way, and she overreacted completely by saying that she wants to discontinue this relationship entirely. I mean, come on. If that's not an overreaction, I don't know what is. And good on her for wanting to go into therapy to try and fix her issues, but it sounds like this has been going on for a really long time. And I think if I was the guy in this situation, I would have to know when enough was enough. So it's really up to him. Does he want to try and help his girlfriend get the help she needs? Or does he want to find someone who's going to want to be with him and not break up with him once a month? I'll take the second choice if you ask me. I used coconut oil right before I used the toilet and water from our bidet got everywhere. I bought a bidet online during the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. It was a cheap one that goes right into the line and isn't powered by anything, so no warm water. It seemed like a great idea at the time, but it got shoved into a corner and forgotten about. It would need an extra part before it could be installed only use cold water, and we never ran out of toilet paper. So it stayed in its box in the corner for nearly two years. I have Crohn's disease and psoriasis. Both are autoimmune disorders that can flare up for a number of reasons. My psoriasis has been under control until recently when it flared up because of the immune response I had to my COVID vaccines. For the first time in my life, I got inverse psoriasis on my nether regions. Unfortunately, to add insult to injury, my Crohn's decided to flare up
flare up as well. So now I'm using the bathroom six to 12 times a day and wiping my butt raw every time. Fun times. But then I remembered the bidet in the corner. I got the extra hose from the hardware store and my husband helped me install it about a month ago. Instant relief. I was so worried about the cold water being a shock, but it was wonderfully refreshing. It has a dial adjustment, but even on the lowest setting, it'll spray across the bathroom if there's no one there to deflect it back into the toilet. Even if you're off center just a little bit, the stream will shoot up behind or in front of you, so you have to be careful to adjust yourself properly before turning it on. I've been using it every time I use the toilet, just to be sure I'm nice and clean down there. Since I have psoriasis and sensitive skin, I use coconut oil as lotion. When I was getting ready this morning, I lubed up from head to toe and got dressed as usual. Right before I headed downstairs, I decided that I should use the bathroom first. I finished doing my business, turn on the bidet on the middle setting, just a light stream to rinse a bit. As I turned it on, I go to scoop back a bit because I am lubed up like crazy from the coconut oil, and I slide all the way forward on the toilet and stop just barely before falling off. The bidet starts shooting water straight up and all over the toilet, the floor, my clothes, and even my hair. I'm able to get the bidet turned off in a matter of seconds, but my bathroom and I both look like we gave a toddler a bath. I had to dry the towel, the floor, and put the bath mats in the dryer. Then I had to change my clothes, dry off, and basically get ready for the day again. Yeah. Nothing like getting ready twice in the morning. Crohn's disease and psoriasis is a nasty combo, so it's understandable that they would use coconut oil to try and alleviate at least one of the problems. As an American, I haven't fully embraced the whole bidet thing, but I have international friends who absolutely swear by them, so clearly there's something to it, but I personally can't get behind it. It's a little weird, it sounds uncomfortable, but apparently it's fantastic. But I guess if you have Crohn's disease and you're gonna be on the toilet a lot anyways, a bidet is probably your best friend. I knew a guy who was on the toilet all the time because of Crohn's disease, it is no joke joke, and it can be quite miserable. So if this provides some kind of relief, then good on you. Go for it. My girlfriend refused to get me toilet paper when it counted the most, so I broke up with her. My girlfriend and I have been together for around six months. We were on a road trip heading across Texas to see her parents. At one point, we needed gas and stopped at a gas station. She went to the bathroom while I was pumping gas, and as I finished, I started feeling a little sick to my stomach. I rushed to the bathroom and sit down and start taking care of business, only to realize too late that there was no toilet paper in the bathroom. I decided to text my girl and ask her to bring me some out to the women's bathroom. She replies that she can't because she's already in the car, as if it is impossible for her to do me a solid by walking back to grab me some toilet paper. This really does bother me because I've gone out of my way to help her in a pinch, like going to the store on my day off to get her some doll and bring it to her job to help her with stomach cramps. Her being unwilling to walk 10 yards to do me a solid favor comes across as her being unwilling to put in much effort. Am I overreacting? No, I honestly don't think he's overreacting. This is a super simple thing. Like, it's not that hard to go and help out your girlfriend and or boyfriend with getting them toilet paper. I mean, this is simple, right? The fact that she just left him stranded in the bathroom with nothing to take care of his business is horrible. I mean, how lazy and inconsiderate can you possibly be to just leave your boyfriend stranded in the bathroom with no means of getting out, if you know what I mean? I mean, to be fair, he has helped her out in a pinch as well. He's gotten her medication for when she wasn't feeling well. The least she could do is step out of the car, walk maybe 10 feet into the bathroom, and get him some toilet paper. I mean, come on, like seriously. The guy goes on to give an update where he talks about how he was planning on breaking up with his girlfriend already because apparently she's just awful. He states that this is literally the straw that broke the camel's back. And good on him, to be honest, because nobody needs this kind of drama in their life. At the end of the day, you're going to want to be with someone who has your back, literally in this case. My girlfriend broke up with me after I refused to pay. I gave her $2,000 to $3,000 every single month, sometimes more, for two years. She had a bank debt as well, which I paid off. This weekend, I said enough is enough. We never agreed for me having to give her money. It just happened naturally over time because of life, stuff, surprise bills, etc. And this weekend, she had the audacity to tell me, I want a man that supports me, and if you don't support me financially, we should just be friends. I don't even know where my head is at right now. I never thought it would happen to me, but I got played hard. I'm sick to my stomach. So much for real love. Let my experience serve as yet another warning, guys. I feel physically sick. This is terrible because the original poster here absolutely got played. The lady in this story did not care about him. She only cared about the money that he was providing every month. And he was giving her $2,000 to $3,000 every single month. That is crazy. It's sad to say, but this lady only saw this guy as a checkbook who would write checks 
checks for her every month whenever she needed it. And he was already paying off her debt from some bank account. The man got used and that's just so sad. And if she really can't see that he's more than just a checkbook and money in the bank, then this guy has no reason to stick around with her. She's an absolute terrible person and he absolutely deserves better. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Turn on notifications so you never miss a video.